In this episode of Stecker Studios, we're practicing chiaroscuro by adding value to a series of forms using blending, hatching, cross-hatching, and the stippling technique. Chiaroscuro is a technique for adding value to create the illusions of three dimensions. The general rule of chiaroscuro is that in this system, if light is coming from one direction, then the light and shadow will conform to a set of rules. First, the area closest and most direct to the light is the brightest. Second, as the light hits the object less directly, the value becomes darker. For the first form, I'm going to be applying blending in order to turn the circle into a sphere. I'm going to begin by working in the darkest areas first, including the cast shadow and the core shadow. In between the cast shadow and the core shadow, we're going to leave a little bit of space for what we call reflected light. This is light that's reflecting off of the surface that the object is sitting on. As I begin to add value to the form itself, I'm going to try to follow the contours and curves of the form and smoothly and gently transition my tone from a dark region to a lighter region. In this series, we're still using the Blick series of pencils, so I'm beginning with a 6B pencil. And as I work towards the lighter regions, I'm going to begin to use a harder and harder pencil to produce lighter and lighter marks. As I apply value with the blending technique, I'm trying to use more of the side of the lead rather than the point in order to cover more ground and keep my transitions nice and smooth. Later I can come back with a rolled up piece of paper in order to smooth out my tones to try to produce that smooth gradation of tone. Take your time as you work in order to do this well. Keep in mind that this video is sped up twice the normal speed in order to keep the video short. At this stage in the drawing, I'm using a 2H pencil to create the lightest tones and leaving behind the white paper to show the highlight from where the light is hitting the picture or the sphere most directly. Now I'm going back in with a piece of paper to kind of smooth out my, my tones and create a nice smooth transition from one tone to the next. Now I'm going back to add one more layer to finish it off. In our next form, the pyramid, we're going to be using the hatching technique. Pay close attention to the direction the light is coming from and make sure that the shadows fall in the opposite direction. With the hatching technique, I usually like to make the hatch marks and hatch lines follow the direction of the form itself in order to accentuate the shape and form of the shape or object that we're drawing. Again, start with the darkest region first, typically the cast shadow and the core shadow. And remember to control the lightness and darkness by placing your lines closer together in order to create dark tones and spacing them out further in order to create lighter tones. You can add multiple layers going in the same direction in order to produce different tones and transitions. As I begin to work on another side, I change the direction of my lines in order to match the direction of this side of the shape. I'm 
On the cube, we're going to be using the cross hatching technique. Again, double check to make sure that your shadow is following in the opposite direction of the light source. Start again with the darkest region of the shape, usually the cast shadow or the core shadow, and apply your hatching and cross hatching marks following the shape of the form or the direction that the side is traveling. Remember that we can do multiple layers going in different directions and take away certain directions or layers in order to make the tones appear lighter and lighter. For the final form, the cylinder, we're going to be using the stippling technique. Again, make sure that your shadow follows the direction of the light and begin drawing or filling in value on the darkest region, the cast shadow. For stippling, remember that you're going to use a higher concentration of dots in order to produce darker tones and provide more space in between your dots and less concentration in order to produce lighter regions. I recommend doing this technique with a marker because using a pencil can take a lot longer and with a classroom full of students, it could also be very noisy. Once you have practice and understand how to apply chiaroscuro to basic forms, it becomes much easier to apply the same concepts to much more complex forms and even to things that you draw in everyday life. Keep practicing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Stecker Studios.